Let's start with a simple dynamic optimization problem represented by this diagram. So there are four periods. The horizontal axis is time or date. So there is date 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the vertical axis is for state, and state is denoted by k. k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So we start at date 0 with state k equals 0. So this initial state is given. And every period we choose either up or down. If you go up at date 0, then at date 1, your state is k equal 1. If you choose to go down at date 0, then at date 1, your state is negative 1. The objective is to maximize the sum of four numbers you go through. For example, if you choose to go up at date 0, and then down at date 1, and then up again and down again, then the numbers are 1, 3, 3, 3. So the sum is 10. But of course this number depends on which route you chose, and because you have to make this up or down decision four times, there are 2 to the power 4 equal 16 possible routes. So a straightforward way to solve this optimization problem is to try these 16 parts one by one. If you have 10 year old kids, that's good math exercise, I think. But I'm sure that if there are 100 kids of 10 years old, at least one of them would realize that if he or she starts this problem from the back, then the problem becomes much, much easier compared with just trying 16 possibilities one by one. That's backward induction. Let's see. At date 3, if you are in state 3, which would you choose, up or down? Of course up, and that way you can get 3. At date 3, if you are in state 1, then you would choose down. That way you can get 3. What if you are in state negative 1? Up. You can get 5. Finally, if you are in state negative 3, then you would choose up to get 6. Given these results, what would you do at date 2? If you are in state 2, then by going up, you can immediately get 6, and after that, you will get 3 by behaving optimally. If you go down, you will immediately get 2, and then after that you will get 3 by behaving optimally afterwards. So you are comparing 6 plus 3 and 2 plus 3. That's 9 versus 5. You would choose up to get 9. Again, this 9 comes from 6 plus 3. If you are in state 0, you compare 3 plus 3, and 2 plus 5, the latter is better, that's 7, so you would choose to go down. Finally, if you are in state minus 2, you compare 4 plus 5, and 2 plus 6, that's 9. Okay? So, depending on which state you are in, at date 2, the value guaranteed is either 9 or 7 or 9 assuming that you will behave optimally afterwards. Given this, what would you do at date 1? At date 1, if you are in state 1, what you compare is 2 plus 9 versus 3 plus 7. The former is 11, the latter is 10, up is better, 11. If you are in state negative 1, you compare 5 plus 7 and 4 plus 9, the latter gives you 13. That's better. These 11 and 13 are the value guaranteed at date 1, depending on which state you are in, and assuming that you will behave optimally afterwards. Finally, at date 0, given the initial state 0, you will choose to go down to get 13. So the maximum number you can achieve is 13, and the decision, the policy that achieves 
the thirteen is down, down, up, up. So it's much easier approach than trying all sixteen possible routes. To mathematically formulate what we were doing here implicitly, let me introduce some notions. The first notion I want to introduce is period return, which is basically these numbers on the path. The immediate return that you can get after making a decision at each date. So the period return at date t depends on the starting state and the ending state. For example, at date 2, if the starting state is 0 and ending state is 1, then the period return is 3. At date 3, if the starting state is negative 3 and ending state is negative 2, then the period return is 6. Okay? The next notion I want to introduce is the constraint for the next date state which we denote by gamma. So the next state dates you can reach depends on the current state you are. For example, at date 1, if you are in state negative 1, the next state states you can reach is either 0 or negative 2. You cannot go to 3 or minus 3. Yeah? Similarly, if you are at date 2, and the current state is 0, the next date state you can reach is either 1 or negative 1 in the next period. The last notion we want to introduce is value, which is basically these numbers with which we filled in these nodes. Nodes are just a combination of a date and a state. The value is the maximum lifetime value that can achieved thereafter. And we denote value by V. For example, if you are at date 3 and state negative 1, you know that you can achieve 5. 5 is the best you can achieve. Yeah? At date 1 and state negative 1, the value is 13. You know that if you are here, by making optimal decision, 13 is the maximum best thing you can achieve. That's what value means. Given these concepts, we can formulate what we were implicitly doing in our backward induction exercise. For example, how did we get this 11? The date 1, state 1, value. We got this 11 by comparing up and down. And the value is denoted by V of 1, 1. So given today's state 1, the state you can reach for tomorrow is either 0 or 2. So the constraint set for tomorrow's state is 0 and 2. And we were comparing this 2 plus 9 and 3 plus 7. That is the sum of period return and the value at the beginning of the next date. Let's say k prime is tomorrow's state. If we choose 0 for tomorrow's state, then the period return is 3, and the value at the beginning of next date is 7. The sum is 10. If we choose 2 for the tomorrow's state, then the period return is 2, and the value at the beginning of tomorrow is 9. The sum is 11. If we maximize our decision, then 11 is the answer. That's how we got this 11. Similarly, how did we get this 9? The date 2, state negative 2 value, which we denote by V of 2, negative 2. Well, the constraint set is minus 3 and minus 1. Those are the states reachable for the next date. If we choose negative 3 as the next date state, k prime, then the first term, period return, is 2, and the second term, value, will be 6, the sum is 8. On the other hand, if we choose negative 1 as the next date state, then the period return, the first term, will be 4, and the value will be 5, the sum is 9. And we choose the better one, to get 9. 
Let me summarize what we were implicitly doing in backward induction exercise because that's related to optimality principle. In his textbook, Bellman describes the principle of optimality as follows. An optimal policy has the property that whatever the initial state and initial decision are, the remaining decisions must constitute an optimal policy with regard to the state resulting from the first decision. Remember, when we were doing the backward induction problem, we were like, okay, starting with this node, what's the best thing we can achieve? Suppose we reached this node, what's the best thing we can achieve? We were not necessarily caring whether reaching that node is actually optimal or not. We were more like, suppose we reach this node, what's the best thing we can achieve? Yeah? And we considered such a problem for each possible node. Again, node is just a combination of a date and a state. And solving such a problem for each possible node leads to this step-by-step, period-by-period maximization problem of this form at each date t and for each state k, choose next date's state k prime so as to maximize the sum of a period return and the next date value, which in turn is implied by the optimal decisions from the next date on. So this next date value itself relies on the fact that from tomorrow on, starting with the next date state, you will behave optimally. And that's what I would call Bellman's principle of optimality.